From 1954, The Thrillers with Elizabeth, written by the songwriting team of Charles Singleton and Rosemarie McCoy. The life, music, and career of Rosemarie McCoy is chronicled in a new book by our guest today, Arlene Corsano. The book is called Thought We Were Singing the Blues, but they called it rock and roll. Arlene, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. Now, the late Rosemarie McCoy's songs have been recorded by everybody, from Laverne Baker, Brooke Benton, Ry Cooter, Dizzy Gillespie, Brenda Lee, Johnny Mathis. I, I mean, it's just overwhelming. How did you uh, get to meet uh, and befriend Rose? Well, I knew Maxine Brown. In fact, I wrote a show that she did called um, uh, Wild Women Don't Have the Blues. She and, and two other friends um, did it. And... Through that, Maxine had a, 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 a party She at, at her apartment. She had just moved to Harlem, and Rose was there. And I didn't even talk to Rose that night, but I, I borrowed a pen from her. I, my, she was talking to my cousin. I turned around, and my cousin said, I don't have a pen. Rose said, here, I do, but I need it back because I hit my neighbor's car on the way over. <laughs> and she also had gotten lost. Um, she had sprained her back, so she was walking very gingerly. So the next time that Maxine had a show or, or something, I said, you know, um, I think I, I should pick up that lady because she doesn't live too far from me. And she said, well, you know, that lady is a songwriter, a pretty, you know, famous songwriter, um, and you should do an article. I was writing for the local papers around this area, the suburb, suburbanite. She lived in Teaneck. Right. So I, I did that, and I was, like, awed, and I only learned a little bit when I wrote that article, and I, I was just, you know, shocked about how much she had known. So we went many places. Every time I said, I'll drive, I'll drive, and uh, <laughs> I, she, she was some driver, I tell you. Um, <laughs> I only went around the corner once with her, and that was even scary. That was enough, right? Yeah, that, that, was, that was enough. <laughs> um, and, uh, and she tells stories. So the first stories were more about her childhood and, and coming up to New York, and they were pretty wild. She was a very sweet woman, but she was also tough. She was a farm girl from Arkansas, and she could handle herself. And I just wanted to hear more stories. She was, she was just a lot of fun. Uh, she was always up. She loved everybody. I, had, I would have parties over my house, and I'd invite her, and people would walk, and she'd go, oh, hi, Howie. You would think she knew them forever. She just loved people and, and wanted to know about them. Just a very interesting woman. And she kissed Jackie Wilson. <laughs> That's the most important thing. I so, thought so. <laughs> she didn't become a Formula One racer, uh, but she kissed Jackie Wilson. So, um, <laughs> did she uh, express to you an interest in in getting her life story out? Yes, she did. She she wanted it, and and she even I I, I, I in the end I had to self publish it because I was working with a producer, big big one, and. And at the end, they said, well, I think you should go to this producer. We can't do this now. And they gave me three others. And, and I said, gee, she's like 91. I better hurry up. Um, and, uh, and I did. Um, uh, you know, I, I, and luckily I did because uh, she saw the book. In her lifetime, and, yeah. yeah she, and, and so um, if I hadn't, she wouldn't have seen it. It took me a long time because Rose would talk about, one person, and all of a sudden she'd switch topics, and she'd be talking about somebody else, but you don't know that. So you're saying, what? Right. <laughs> uh, and, and she said, no, no, now I'm talking about somebody else. And, and I had a mother that would do that, so, so I was kind of used to that. And, uh, you know, it, it, took, it took quite a while to make sure I got everything straight, and then she was so succinct when she would describe things, it... it wouldn't have been enough. I wanted to do an autobiography, and because right. I really didn't want to do the book at all, I, I went to an author who did books like this, who knew Rose, and he said too difficult. And I found out why, um, and because the way she and sometimes she didn't even want to talk about the music business. She wanted to talk about something else, or let's go out and eat. And she didn't talk when she ate. So, um, it, you know, we just became very close, and I spoke to her every day to check up on her and. Then she would just sometimes go into a story, and, and that's how I was able to get enough to make a book. Well, it's a wonderful book. You know what? I think we should hear one of the songs that Rose wrote. Uh, what would you like us to play, Arlene? Uh, Jackie Wilson. 
a kiss, a thrilling goodbye. I said, Rose, was that after he kissed you or before? Did you write the song? Because <laughs> she was going into her office, and uh, his manager was on her floor, so um, he came up behind her and turned around and gave her a kiss. She said, I almost fainted. And <laughs> she, she says, wow. <laughs> and so I said, oh, then you wrote the song? She said, I don't know if I wrote the song first or whether, because I'm thinking maybe she wrote the song, and then so that's why he did that. But she said he was like that. He was very flirtatious. My guest today is Arlene Corsano. She's the author of the book Thought We Were Writing the Blues, but they called it rock and roll, the life and music of Rose Marie McCoy, as we mentioned, former Teaneck resident Rose Marie McCoy. Her songs were recorded by practically everyone. Uh, obviously, Jackie Wilson, we just heard, Nat King Cole, Little Willie John, Elvis Presley. Eartha Kitt, I mean, Aretha Franklin, the, Eddie Arnold, the list goes on and on. I mean, it is a remarkable career. Yeah, and I didn't know all of the songs or all, like, I didn't know Big Maybell, but I knew, you know, Eartha Kitt and right. I and Tina Turner and Nat King Cole, of course, Jackie Wilson, because she was writing, uh, well, I was kind of young at the first era in the 50s when she started, but the 50s, the 60s. I knew these songs from the radio. I, Alan Freed would play Nappy Brown, Ruth Brown. Right. So I, I knew a lot of this, and I was like, wow, she wrote that? Wow, she wrote that? And she was pretty humble about everything. Um, you know, she'd say, I'm not that smart to write all these songs, but I wrote them perfectly because God just speaks to me, and it just comes to her. She's, it just, uh, you know... It wasn't, she, you know, sometimes you had to work at, at things, yes, but a lot of times she said it just flows through me in 20 minutes. Sometimes she had a whole song. We just heard a little montage of the original version of Trying to Get to You, written by Rose Marie McCoy and her songwriting partner Charles Singleton, as recorded originally by the Eagles in 1954, and then Elvis Presley's cover of that song on the Sun label, from 1955, and of course Elvis countrified it, as he often did when he covered a, an R&B song. Arlene, how did Elvis discover trying to get to you? He found it in uh, Memphis, Memphis, in a record store. And, and it was so funny the way she said, um, uh, you know, they couldn't understand when people said, oh, you're so lucky, you know, and she said, huh? You know, like the way he shakes his leg and, <laughs> you know, she, she didn't understand it, but um, there he was, you know, he, he was the king. But she didn't, you know, they didn't know of of him, you know, until she saw him on, on TV and he did Trying to Get to You. And then later he did I Beg of You. Right. Now that was written specifically for him, wasn't it? Yes, that was that was for him. So he, yeah. he took it to uh, uh, Freddie Beanstock, who was, uh, you know, would, would choose songs to show to, to Elvis. And he said, you got Elvis. <laughs> and and uh, she said, "Boy, that was lucky." <laughs> well, it's not. It's not surprising that he found that song because he was a student of rhythm and blues, right? And you know, it's so sad that uh, you know he people think he's a racist, yeah, yeah, because of that comment that he never made. Yeah, it was, uh, and you talk about it in your book. It was reported in in basically a tabloid. And it got picked up, and people believed it. And even though Jet Magazine looked into the story and proved that no, you know this none of this ever happened, it was supposedly made in Boston, and he was never in Boston at the time. And a man on the street heard. I mean, you know, it's as vague as possible, but unfortunately, it uh, it stuck. Yeah, when when you think back in those days, I remember reading so much about he was banned, especially down south. Uh, in a lot of uh, big cities, would just ban him because he was singing black music. Right. And um, I, I heard a beautiful story um, that when he went to uh, someplace in Texas, he, he was performing, and they said he had the um, sweet inspirations were backing him up, and they said uh, to leave them home, leave the black girls at home, and he refused to do that. And, right. And, and, and you know, I thought that was so. So he's been maligned so badly, and and, and the, one of the last people who deserve it. Rose had the opportunity to work for big record labels, and she turned them down for the most part, didn't she? 
Yeah, she she signed up with Joy Records one time when she was having money trouble. She had a club and, you know, things things went bad. And so she signed up with them but didn't even last a year. And she signed up, up with um, King, and that didn't last a year either because she just didn't like to be told what to write. She was uh, too much of a, of a, of a rebel. <laughs> oh, she was, yeah. She, you know, she, she was going to do it her way. And uh, and Charlie Singleton too, her uh, probably most famous partner, right? Um, or, or one of you know, as a songwriter. I mean, she also wrote George Clinton and other people too that are famous. But um, Charlie Singleton didn't seem to uh, join up with anybody either, as, as far as I know. He was always uh, uh, by himself. Uh, you know, didn't it was not a staff writer, and and that's probably why she never got into the Songwriters Hall of Fame too. Because I spoke to Sylvia Moy, mm-hmm. who wrote for Motown, right? And Sylvia is in the the Songwriters Hall of Fame. And when I spoke to her, she says, "I can't believe Rose is an in. She's got four times as many hits as me, and she's the one who started it. She came before us, you know, ten years before to let." The women, you know, like Carol King and Ellie Greenwich, and right. you know that we could do it. She said so. She belongs there, but she didn't have any big company pushing to get her in. Uh, so she's still not there, and may never get there if uh, uh, you know she doesn't have somebody to do whatever they got to do to get her in. Because I've tried. I've tried. Right. But. Well, it's all political, you know. <laughs> yeah, all I, of these halls of fame are all less about fame and more about politics. Right. Yeah, I, I kind of learned that, but I thought maybe I could um, embarrass them into it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't work. <laughs> well, let's embarrass them a little more. Uh, why don't you pick another song of of roses to play? Uh, House Party by uh, Louis Jordan. <laughs> That was Nappy Brown with Well, Well, Baby La as we chat with Arlene Corsano about her new book, Thought We Were Writing the Blues, but they called it rock and roll. The life and music of Rosemarie McCoy. We're celebrating the life and music of Rosemarie McCoy today. You know, I guess most people associate Rose with the 50s and 60s, but she continued on in music, didn't she? Yeah, she continued. They were they were less known people, but she did Sarah Vaughan. I mean, well... Sarah Vaughan's not less known. Yeah, it's pretty well known. She, yeah, she did uh, an album, um, Send in the Clowns. And there were two Sarah Vaughan albums, Send in the Clowns. That was the early 70s, right? Yeah, this was, I think, 75, 74, maybe. Mm, yeah. It was in the 70s. Um, and uh, then later she did another one that she didn't like the picture. They, they put a clown in clown makeup on, on the front, <laughs> and Sarah didn't like that, but she did some beautiful songs, Rose, the, the, the lyrics that just make you cry, uh, a few of them. She has five songs on that, and she also produced it, she and Helen Miller. Um, right. But uh, she said we never got credit, so hardly anybody got credit back then. Well, let's play one of those cuts. Which one do you want to hear? One of Sarah Vaughan's songs, um, um, Love Don't Live Here Anymore. We always hear stories about songwriters getting the raw end of the deal. And at any point in Rose's career, was uh, she doing well financially? Well, she was from, by 55, from 52 to 55, because uh, 52 she had the, the first hit with, um, or really 53, a big Maybell, um, Gabin Blues. Gabin Blues, yep. Um, but by 55 she bought a house in Jersey, uh, the house she stayed in, in you know, had forever, right? And um, and a Cadillac and a yacht, so she did very well. But they did it all on advances, right? And that's when she had her Nappy Brown hits and her Ruth Brown, Mambo Baby, and Faye Adams hurts me to my heart. So, but they didn't trust Shirley. Charlie Singleton said, "Grab the cash." She didn't trust right. royalties, and she said we weren't getting royalties. But they would just get a hundred dollars advance. And and back then it added up quite a bit because she's got a lot of songs then. Oh sure. And uh, and she she was doing well. And then the '60s came and the Beatles and right. they were writing their own songs pretty much. And and everybody else decided they could write their own songs too. She said and that was made it tough. You know, that is her. really 
I mean, I hear that a lot. And, uh, of course, you know, not to take away anything from what the Beatles did, but they changed the way the whole music industry was run, you know, where, where performers and writers were two separate entities. Right. And, and, um, uh, and the words of a lot of repetition, and, and I think, and then it became a lot more the the um, production than right. uh, than the song itself. You know, kind of is getting out of hand. I think today, in my mind, it's getting out of hand. Cause well, today I, there's... I don't like drum machines. <laughs> well, yeah, well, today you know when you hear a song on the radio, you think, now was that a song or did a train go by? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I think maybe because I'm getting older, it's a, I, I can't differentiate, but I do like to hear a great sax solo, you know. Sure. Uh, I do like to, you know, I want to hear the drums, uh, you know, because it, it just adds so much to it, and, and you don't have that anymore. And And the lyrics, sometimes I can't understand them, and when I do, they just, don't seem to really grab yeah. me. They don't when, make me want to cry. Or when you, know. you do understand them, you wish you you hadn't. Yeah, yeah baby. <laughs> sometimes. <Right. laughs> um, sometimes. She, you, you do write in the book that uh, Rose did receive royalty payments from uh, Elvis Presley's organization. Yeah, they were the they were the best. She said they they paid right. Of course, you know maybe they probably all. Rob you. you know, somebody sure. told me that that was in the book industry and say we we all rob. She says, even right. the big ones because I said maybe the big ones aren't so. She says no, nah, they just do it enough so you don't um, uh, so people don't sue us. She says but once in a while an author will you know right and I would say what book company that was but it's a big one. So I hear in the in, in the business too you you have to keep on top of things and and that wasn't what she did. Um, she, uh, you know, sometimes I, I look and say, well, you know, is this copywritten or where did, did you do this? And ah. <laughs> Well, she was an artist in that, yeah, in yeah, that she sense. Didn't yeah, like that part. I think in the beginning she didn't. Charlie Singleton was a great help uh, in, in that respect. He, he, was, he was sharp. He, was, uh, he had been a promoter down in um, Florida, and he, those, those, those skills, she, he, he helped her quite a bit. Well, before we uh, start to wrap up here, why don't we play another selection from the Rosemarie McCoy songbook that you've uh, picked out? We'll cry together. Maybe you have that one, Maxine Brown. From 1969, that's Maxine Brown with We'll Cry Together, written by Rosemarie McCoy and Helen Miller. Arlene Corsano has been our guest this hour as we've been chatting about the life and music of Rosemarie McCoy. Her new book is called Thought We Were Writing the Blues, but they called it rock and roll. And Arlene, I want to give our audience a chance to uh, to find this book and get it. Where would they do that? Well, Barnes & Noble has it. I don't know if they have it in the stores yet, but they have it online. I know barnesandnoble.com, you can, you can find it there. Right. Um, I, I have it on my site, too, but go to Barnes & Noble because... And they'll keep they'll keep pushing it. <laughs> they'll, sure, they'll, yeah. They'll keep it up, um, and they'd probably bring it in the store. I think if you you asked them, I didn't even ask because it really just got got there not too long ago. The uh, the picture of the book cover is on there, but it's BarnesandNoble dot com. But that's where it is. It's also in Sisters Uptown Bookstore, and there is um, uh, there's a website that if you want to see the th- I have three hundred. 60 people right now that I know, or over 360 people who have recorded her songs, and that's up on rosemariemccoymusic.com, and the book is there, too. Well, Arlene, this has been fascinating. Well, thank you so much, because I just enjoy discussing what she did. I'm so proud and so happy that I knew somebody that it was just a, a, a gift, well, listen, you were a gift to her, too, because she got to see this book before she passed away yeah. uh, in 2015, or in January of, of this year. Yeah. Well, as we head out here, why don't you pick one last song from uh, Rosemarie McCoy? How many will be remembered? Do you, um, that's a Shirley Caesar gospel um, song. I'm a lyric person, so um, uh, that one, Shirley Caesar even did a, a, a video with this song, and she dedicated it to to her soldiers. Um, 
You know, it says it takes people, all kinds of people, to make a world. They say we've got all kinds of people running through the world today. We've got saints and sinners, losers and winners, and the good old me's and you's. How many will be remembered? Just a few. Well, thank you so much, Arlene. It's been a, a joy to speak with you, and have a great rest of your day. Okay, well, thank you.